another good afternoon, all of the WRMN listeners out there in Radio Land. It's Wednesday. It sure is Wednesday here in downtown Elgin. It's supposed to be up to, I said it this morning, 60 degrees either today or tomorrow. Beautiful summer day. Soon to be summer day. Think we got there? No. No, I think it was wishful thinking when I heard it this morning. I think when I was in the sun with my car, it said 59. Yeah. Or oh, you're on 59. That's what the difference is. Oh, it was on 59. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was the temperature was 59. Well, before I lose control of the show as I do every Wednesday, <laughs> this is the Laura Dion Jones show, heard here on every Wednesday, AM 1410 WRMN in Elgin. Laura, looking fantastic as always oh. today. How are you doing today? I'm Marvy. Marvy. And um, happy chilly spring, everyone, and happy St. Patty's Day. Yes, 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 yes. And today is the f first official day of spring, and could it actually be here? When did you start this? It's, today's only, this is not a taping, is it? Did they I miss said that on the radio. Oh, oh, it's not the first day of spring. Today is the official day March 21 day or 22. Yeah, Monday. That's what I thought, but they said it on the, on the not on the radio, not on, on the on TV radio. this morning. If, if somebody said that, we've been shortchanged for winter, and yes, I'm complaining. I'm complaining, Lost too. five or four full days. We need at least one more blizzard to put the city of Elgin to the test. That's right. One but, more time. Uh, one more blizzard after bring spring up the beast. Yeah. starts. Yes, bring up the beast. Let's see That's if right. we can still work in the summertime. Well said. Yes. Listen, does anyone here know what triscodectophobia is? Yeah. Fear you do? Of, fear of 13. Fear of oh. cheese and crackers. Yeah, fear okay. of 13. Why, yeah, always... Triscuit? Why do some people fear 13? Uh, well, and, and I just met somebody who had just the opposite thing because there's 13 stars on the flag. Hi there, YouTube. There's 13 of... Uh, uh, blue stripes. So everything's 13. So everything's lucky for 13. So There's not 13 stars uh, on the flag. Well, there's 13 original stars. On, uh, past, uh, 13 boy. stars in the original colonies <laughs> when they bring that out in the original Back, and the 13 stripes. <laughs> well, I go, I didn't even know Alaska Back and Hawaii. It could be way. states when I was young. <laughs> I said, it's an island. That can't be. And Alaska's cold. And yes. they also said that there were 13 people at the Last Supper. Yeah, 13 uh, can't be lucky. Ozzy Guillen, 13, he, he's lucky with that. And Friday the 13th is considered especially unlucky by many, while in some cultures and in the Spanish-speaking world, for example, it's Tuesday the 13th that is believed to be unlucky. Really? Wow. Yeah. The most unique 13 thing is a lot of hotels don't have a floor 13. Yes. That a lot is of really office buildings, too. Yeah. That is right. really exotic in their uh, quest. For and you know what? In Asia, a lot of office buildings, I noticed, didn't have the... Or 13 either. Wow, so it looks like it's 50 50 as far as a 13. But however, my lucky number is 13. 13. Is it really? Yeah. Can you and it, how did you determine that? I don't know. Well, then, then it's a scientific it study. It was given <laughs> to me at my confirmation, I think. Oh, wow. Well, <laughs> did you play Mega Millions? Always. Is that your Mega Ball? Could be. Is it ever one? I found out recently that you can have a quick pick a Mega, but you still pick the ball, the Mega Ball that oh, you want. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I just found uh, out because I have two numbers. I, and it's always quick pick. Oh, wait a minute, can I do a quick pick and pick my lucky number as the Mega Ball? Well, of course you can. That's great. That's how I play it from now on. Great I'm modern day radio, you can talk gambling. I love in the old days, we used to, <laughs> if we mentioned a raffle or anything with gambling in the early radio days, you are fired, young man. Now, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was. It was. It was a no-no. Perhaps. But that was back when they had 13 stars. Uh, on the e even the early days, we've had the lottery in Illinois since '74. <laughs> even the early days, it was still a little. That was a raffle. <laughs> you know, it was like that. It was. You were scared of that word. Wow. Do you know when I was little, my cousin, state lottery winners, wow. when they would determine the winner with the horse race. You know what I mean? They would pick so many winners, and then everybody was given a number of a horse. Wow. And she really? won. That was a Jack Trees, let's go yes. to the races. That was a Jules yeah. thing, wasn't it? Yes, at the Jewel. Oh, my gosh. That. That was, they, they took I was old, little. Uh, me, too. They took old, George me remembers too. this. They took old horse racing film from Florida. Really? And the legendary Jack Trees hosted, let's go to the races. And tonight's races would be, these were races from, like, 1951. And it was like the summer of '66. This was on, and they would they okay. would determine the winners with jewel cards. But yes. it was it was old video that these horses were long gone. Yeah, she won. Did she? How yeah. much did she win? Like a, a million, even. No way. Wow. Yeah, way. Wow. And wow. everybody, she was one of the most unfavorite in the family because she was the type that if she saw a car in front of your house, she would start a name a, a, a rumor like so and so's having an affair, and it could be no. the insurance. Oh, she was brutal. Wow. She was brutal. Sounds like Joan Rivers. <laughs> if anybody, excuse She'd me, God, for now. saying this, yes. if anybody did not deserve to win, it was her. What, what happened? Did she use the money wisely? Is she still alive? I don't know. I don't know. Moved to Colorado. And you never, you couldn't contact her? Lost or? touch. Okay. Well, that's Which was okay. A lesson to be learned. Don't win a million dollars. It could cause trouble. This is the Lord Dion Jones Show. Lose weight fast, get rich quick, look young forever. And learn how to win the lottery. And learn how to win the lottery. Is this what you're talking about? We're getting, getting rich quick? Well, those, those programs are going to be coming up 
in a few short weeks. Okay. Okay. I have some surprises in store for you. I but love Wednesdays. In the studio, I do too. <laughs> in the studio with us today are Mike Hunziker, who you've just heard from. He's one of my favorite guy pals. Jeff Myers, my amazing co-host, who I need a favor from. Yes. <laughs> and of course, our YouTube camera girl, Valerie the Swan. And our special in-studio guest today with us is Anna Moeller, who's running for Elgin City Council, and she's here to tell us why she loves Elgin and how she fits into our city's future. Meanwhile, back at the WRMN Ranch, today's show is brought to you by... The good folks that we call Taylor YMCA. You're there often, aren't you? I thought so. They have got great uh, events always going on there. You can you can swim if you like, whatever you might. They are right there at 50 North McLean Boulevard. Hush up over there. 847-888-7410. Taylor YMCA, of course, the EBLers. You're going there tonight, are you not, my dear? I certainly am. I thought so. All right, so we'll see over there, and we'll say hello to everybody. Also, Clara Leas, Dr. Clara Leas, she's got perfect posture, Exhibit A. I was there today All for right. my acupuncture and adjustment. For Diva, she is a, a, the acupuncture, and uh, you're okay because you're, you're, uh, you're looking good. Thank you. And Dr. Clara say you're, everything was fine? Says I'm ready for surgery. <laughs> That's always a happy note when your doctor tells <laughs> My doctor, you're ready for surgery. Goody. All right, but in this case, but in this is charted. Yeah, this is charted, and your posture is good. That's what we mean for the YouTube camera. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Claire Leas, 847-888-9988. We're proud to say you're ready for surgery. <laughs> well, in my case... And yeah, in your case, because you're getting, we ought to tell the class again, because we do have every now yes. and then folks will be driving on 59 and wondering what was going on. You are getting what done? I am getting a total left knee replacement on March 31st, which is going to be two weeks from tomorrow exactly. Think of me, I'll be at Northwestern Wow. Uh, getting my knee replaced. And if it goes well, did you hear what's going to happen? This is great news. Oh, tell me. If the oh, knee repair goes well, you'll sign a 10-day contract with the Bulls. <laughs> so she's yeah. so good with that. So really? you could do well. All I want to do is ride the Zamboni. <laughs> well, that's the wrong sport. <laughs> nice try. Right Maybe you're a hawk. She's got the right building. Can you skate? I used to. All right. Well, you qualify for a Blackhawk then. <laughs> Listen, we'd also like to thank Snobhounds.com, a canine clothing company. Thinks Nike meets Donna Karen, but for canine, Snobhounds is real environmental protection wear for your pooches and Casey Tool, an automotive specialty tool company available through your um, Snap-on mobile tool distributor. And a very special thank you to Casey for making this show and all of our shows possible. And I have a did you know. Uh -oh. good, good. Did you know that we are losing 1.8 microseconds of time every 24 hours because of the recent Japanese earthquake? And that's why wow. spring came early this year. Oh, you know, you have a point. Well, you know why? Because the Earth has shrunk around the equator, just like some of us need to do. <clears throat> Not that I'm... Yeah. What is that? George Rawlinson commenting in the background. Um, <laughs> um, so think of an ice skater's arms when he or she spins and spins, and then at, um, they start with the arms spread out wide, and as the skater sprint, uh, spins, she springs her arms in tighter, compressing herself, increasing her velocity. And our Earth has been compressed because of the quake, because when the plate slipped under the plate that, you know, the Pacific plate slipped under the Japanese plate. Wow. Really? Swear Do to we God. Have, the Earth ever I watch Recover, does it, we ever recover from that? Or is that they don't know, actually, because the plate now is under. That's what caused the whole upheaval and why it was such a horrendous tidal wave, I mean, uh, tsunami, yeah. because the Pacific plate it went under the plate that the Japan is on, and Raised it up. just upheavaled everything. But I also know about sea, sea floor spreading in the Atlantic, which is actually making the Earth bigger, so I think it does actually even itself out. Well, we will have to look that up. They did not mention that. Uh -huh. I will have to... Uh, uh, tweet them and see what they have to say. Please. It's amazing, isn't it? It is amazing. Listen, I have a quote for the week. Ready? George knows. Can, he might. I know someone who will know this. Continuous effort, not strength or intelligence, is the key to unlocking our potential. The Albert Einstein. Mm -mm. W.C. Fields. No. No. <laughs> I thought we had it. <laughs> W.C. Uh, George, shout something out. Or you dismissed. I'm William Clinton. William uh, Winston Churchill. Well, of course, with vigor. He would say it like with vigor. <coughs> with vigor? Say, oh, vigor. So listen, with continuous like a bulldog. effort. Yes. Vigor? Uh, vigor. With continuous effort, not strength or intelligence, it truly is one of the most crucial components to true and everlasting weight loss. Take it from me. Come develop your continuous effort to finally lose all your unhealthy, unwanted weight by committing to get fit with Elgin's Biggest Loser 5 that is now coming to Elgin Community College beginning June 1st from 5 to 7, Wednesday evenings for 8 weeks. 
Um, what better time to get started on your new health and fitness plan than summer? And EBL will help sail right to help you sail right through all those backyard barbecues and festivals without gaining any more weight. Um, and for all of Elgin's Biggest Loser alums, we're going to have a mini EBL 4.5 weigh-in, hopefully at the wide, to keep everyone on track weight-wise until EBL 5 starts June 1st. So Elgin's Biggest Loser 4 is over on March 30th. So it's time now for our very special guest. Let's give a warm welcome to Anna Moeller, candidate for Elgin City Council. Oh, oh, oh applause. Okay. We've got applause. Hang on here. Well, get ready. Oh, <laughs> well, we're going to wait. Warm LDJ welcome. Wait for your applause. Thank or election day. We have two choices. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Welcome, Anna. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Mikey. There here it is. It is. Oh. Sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm screening phone calls. Does this ever happen on Dr. Phil? It does. <laughs> okay. Then that's okay. Anna, welcome to the Laura Dion Jones Show. Thank we're you. so great. We're so pleased to have you. Thank you. Listen, Thank you tell so us much for having me. We are indeed delighted. Um, I see you at all kinds of events and at city council meetings and everything, and so it's mm -hmm. finally good to sit down with you. Yeah, likewise. Um, tell us about yourself, like where you grew up and like that. Sure. Um, I grew up in Waukegan, Illinois, not too far from here. Actually, mm -hmm. born in Berkeley, California. Uh, but raised in Waukegan and um, went to Northern Illinois University, got my bachelor's in arts uh, there, and then uh, uh, went back, got my master's, and um, was living um, in Waukegan for a little bit, and we were looking for a place that was somewhere near Northern, DeKalb, and uh, somewhere between Skokie and Harvard, and found Elgin, and uh, fell in love with this community. Um, almost immediately. So we moved here back in 1997. So you're here like 12-ish years? 13-ish? 13, yep. 13, 13 years! years. 13, See, yeah, lucky, lucky number! Lucky 13. Yep. What's your, uh, what is your current career position? Uh, right now I'm the Executive Director of the McHenry County Council of Governments. It's a small nonprofit organization in McHenry County. We work with uh, m uh, municipalities, cities and villages, uh, townships in the county, in McHenry County and provide programs and services for them, um, try to address issues that are affecting municipalities and local governments right now, and um, have been doing that for the past six years. No kidding. Yeah, it's a great, it's a great job. Do you go to, is your office in McHenry? Just it curious. Is. It is, it's in Crystal Lake. Okay. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it's been, it's been a, it's a, it's a great organization. I'm the first executive director, um, I, and it's a, a little over a part-time um, position. Um, we have a small budget, but it's a, it's been a great learning experience, and it's a great opportunity to see what's going on in the world of local government. And um, we also work with organizations like the Metropolitan Mayor's Caucus, which is uh, an organization that works with all of the municipalities in the region and the city of Chicago. Mm -hmm. Mayor Daly is the uh, honorary uh, chairman of that organization. And uh, we look at issues on a regional level, like transportation, housing, economic development, um, education, health those care? kinds of things. Any health care? A, a little bit, a little bit. Um, when I first started, we um, we worked on, uh, we investigated the feasibility of creating a health insurance cooperative for our municipalities so that they could save costs in providing health insurance benefits to their employees. and. Um, uh, it was a. Uh, it, it, it never. Um, it wasn't uh, started at that time, but um, it it led to other um, ideas as far as how to uh, share resources through joint purchasing, and um, um, consolidating um, some of our uh, programs so that municipalities can save money. But um, certainly, health health care is a big issue for municipalities and you know residents, people in the community. Um, so we, we approached it from that angle. And there, the health care is a big concern. Mm -hmm. I was at, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm a member of the Elgin Leadership Academy. Mm -hmm. Saturday we had a class at Sherman. We got to sit down with the CEO of Sherman, um, Floyd, Mr. Floyd, Rick Floyd, and with the CEO of Provena, St. Joe. And he's going to be the, he's the incoming CEO. And um, it was very, very interesting yeah. to hear what they had to say about uh, people in in the area, yeah. you know, with 
the health care issue and not, you know, not insured. And, right, right. Um, it was pretty incredible. Um, your campaign slogan is, let's move Elgin forward. How can you help Elgin do this? Well, um, I, I think that Elgin's been moving in the right direction for the past few years. And um, since I've lived here, we, I've seen a lot of um, a lot of great changes. The, there's an emerging downtown. Um, certainly, uh, there's there's more to be done in that regard. But um, from when I moved here to uh, the way it is now, um, there's been a lot of progress made. Um, the crime rate is at a 40-year low, which is which is great. That's incredible. Um, yeah, I, it, a, a lot of uh, you know housing that's come to the downtown. Um, uh, new neighborhoods that we've added to the community, um, but there are challenges that are still facing our community. The recession has had an impact on our budget. It's had an impact on our residents uh, through um, higher unemployment rates, uh, lack of jobs, and um, and it's had an impact on how we can provide services to our to our community. Um, when I talk about moving Elgin forward, I think that we we need to ensure that we have um, that we keep the forward momentum we've we've maintained, while addressing the challenges that are facing the community right now. And um, I've outlined um, the you know uh, my agenda and how I think that the the city can move forward. Um, we need to be sure that we are living within our means and prioritizing our spending on investing in infrastructure and public safety. Uh, we need to be supporting our neighborhoods to ensure that um, they continue to revitalize. We still have areas that um, uh, of, of disinvestment and blight, and we need to give homeowners, property owners, the uh, tools that they can use to uh, revitalize their, um, their neighborhoods. We also need to be ensuring that we're bringing new jobs and, and investing in economic development so that we can diversify our tax base, we're not so reliant on the property tax, and that we're bringing in jobs for residents who need them. Um, I th again, I think the city has made um, some progress in that regard. We have new corporations, international corporations, who've located here, which, no is, kidding. which is wonderful. Mm -hmm. And um, the efforts to work with ECC and U46 and workforce training, I think, um, are definitely steps in the right direction so that our Elgin residents will be um, equipped and have the skills that they need to to work in the jobs of the future um, but we need to keep moving forward with those kinds of programs and uh, and finding new opportunities to improve in those areas and that's why I'm running good you just answered my question then why you're running for City Council <laughs> <laughs> you say you believe that Elgin has strong potential to become a sustainable diverse oh, and yeah. vibrant community where people enjoy living and working what does sustainable yeah, exactly mean to you four, okay. Um, sustainable is, is kind of a newer word in the lexicon. I, I you know I think it's kind of come into vogue um, in the past few years with a lot of the environmental initiatives that um, local governments and communities have undertaken. To me, sustainable certainly means uh, using our resources wisely, whether they're natural resources, water, um, uh, you know, land, um, uh, energy. But it also means li living within our means and uh, marshalling our resources and adapting to change so that we can continue to provide um, the, the best possible services to our, our community. Um, it, it's interesting, you know, I, I was very close with my, uh, my grandparents, my great grandparents who lived through the Great Depression and um, experienced the time, you know, where every, conservation was like a necessity for everybody. Mm -hmm. And um, it wasn't uh, a fashionable thing to do. We just did it because you, you had to. You had to. You didn't have any money, and or people had um, fewer options, and so you conserved. And you know, we've been very prosperous in this country, and we've haven't had to do that as a necessity. <clears throat> but now I think we're we're coming back to understanding the wisdom of living like that. And this doesn't mean being austere and and sacrificing and doing without, but. Just ensuring that we're using our resources to the best possible use and and, and conserving um, where we can, um, and I think that that's you know moving forward. Um, I think that that's becoming more and more of a, an accepted idea again, and uh, and that's what I mean by sustainable. You know, it's it's being conservative with our resources so that we can have them in the future. Mm -hmm. Tell us, um, what does diversity mean to you? You'd like to see Elgin continue to be diverse and become more diverse? Well, 
Um, that was one of the things that attracted me to Elgin. Um, growing up in Waukegan, um, I appreciated that I went to school with people from all different backgrounds, ethnicities, socioeconomic, and I think it, it was a huge benefit to me. Definitely. And uh, when my husband and I were looking at um, where we wanted to lay down roots and, um, and raise our kids, we wanted to find a, a place that had a similar, um, a similar diversity. We wanted our kids to um, have the benefit of knowing other kids from different backgrounds. And I think that diver places that are diverse are more interesting. Sure there's they more, are. There's, mm -hmm. more, um, there's more going on culturally mm -hmm. and artistically. And um, I see it as a huge benefit that Elgin um, has a diverse um, community. Um, so certainly diversity of uh, people and backgrounds, and then also diversity in the type of businesses that we're attracting, um, bringing different kinds of um, services and, and um, products uh, to the downtown and to other commercial areas, I think is important. It has a, it has a broader meaning just beyond the population. I agree. You say that vibrant, the vibrancy of a community is one where people enjoy living and working. What is Elgin's vibrancy? What does it mean to you? <clears throat> well, I, I find vibrancy in, in the historic aspect of Elgin, the different kind of architecture that you find here, uh, the different kinds of people that you find here. Um, and I, Vibrancy to me means, you know, it's, it's a lie that there's uh, mm -hmm. there's an energy energy yeah yeah and I, and you can definitely feel that and I and I think that as we continue to redevelop the downtown and bring more people living in the downtown bring more people living in our our current neighborhoods bringing more um, businesses that you're going to and more arts the art space uh, project that's coming downtown su supporting the arts you guys are big on the arts out here I am real impressed with some yeah. of the things that you do even last summer with the thing that um, the event that Ziggy Cimentos yes. ran, uh, you know that was it was fabulous. The Green Expo and then, oh, and the art, and the art, um, the yeah. arts. The uh, Sean Hargan uh, gathering in the summer. Right, where right. They, they go, they dress in character. You're talking yeah, about. Yeah, they one. had five plays in five different locations. Yeah, that's great. Right. Like yeah. Art for all. Yeah, right, right. right. Good call. Yeah, yeah. That's I love that, and I think that's the mark of a strong community, where you've got people. This is a great, you know, grassroots, organically. People are coming up with ideas, and um, there's a lot of talent that. out here. I'm impressed. Yeah, and in, in all areas. Yeah. Uh, the longer I'm out here, guess today is the 70th, 70th, 70th show. Can you believe it? Really? Already? Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> if you're counting at home, that's yeah. very good. <laughs> 70 Mark shows. Mark your calendars. Uh -huh. um, how have you seen Elgin change over the years since you've been a resident? <clears throat> uh, I think the, the most dramatic change, a couple dramatic changes that I've seen. One is um, when we moved here, uh, recreational opportunities were not as great as they are now. Um, the center wasn't here. We, uh, we didn't have the, the current library. Both of those have been, I think, um, great additions to the community and, and provide an attraction to families when they're looking mm -hmm. at places to move. Um, you have a terrific library in the center. I got to spend two days there last week working out because I stayed up here for five days because of my show and at EBL uh -huh. and Image Awards and then Friday night Youth Leadership Academy and banquet and all events Saturday and then Sunday we pre-recorded and oh my God I was up here it's a holiday. and I was well kind of working and I was very concerned where I was going to work out so I had gotten two guest passes to the center and I will tell you it's very nice. You know, if I wanted to do, I want to have somebody on from the center so I can do a comparison with them versus Good East idea. Bank. Um, you know, we have six rolls at East Bank. You have two, but the two here are better in better condition than the six <laughs> at East Bank okay. because you don't have uh, people who are OC about, you know, growing weird and doing strange things. And besides, all I had to do was turn my head to the right and I could see the Fox River. Yeah, when view. I wrote, yeah, 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 they have a, a, a great view. And it's saying that she moved here in '97, and that, and the center opens up in December uh, 2002. I was going to ask when. Yeah, that's the when it opened, opened, and the library is October 2003, I believe. Yeah, so all that yeah. time frame, nearly, it's yeah. boat money that brings the center to us, and, and the library uh, a different set. Did you climb the wall, Laura? Of course, I climbed the wall. Well, Here's when I climbed year, the remember? wall last January yeah. we have with Mayor Shock's wife. 
we oh, have right. video yes. on a Monday night. Good. On a Monday night, my my orthopedic surgeon was having palpitations, but he said, hey, "Go ahead and try it." <laughs> Took See, nine months before her knee was gone. <laughs> here we here's what he said: "See what happens and let me know." Uh, that's cute. <laughs> it was cute. I made it to the top. Did that's I not? Awesome. Yeah, you did well. That's great. Um, what are some of the challenges quickly that face our city going forward? Well, uh, certainly because of the economy, we our our revenues are down with our budget. And it's going to require some tough decision making um, come, you know, this this fall um, on how we're going to live within our means, funding our current core services while holding the line on taxes and fees and, and not burdening our taxpayers. Um, I think I think I see that as the biggest challenge. Um, another big challenge is um, is bringing jobs and opportunities to the to people in the community who currently are either unemployed or underemployed. So I think those are the two biggest challenges we're going to be facing in the next year or so. I think you think small business can help. I mean, small business meaning you know small business, not Absolutely. like the Swiss companies or the German yeah. companies that mm -hmm. are coming, with or the Japanese companies, mm -hmm. but um, smaller companies. From what I hear, people are afraid their taxes are going to go up even higher. Is there anything you can do as an Elgin City Council member to reassure the residents of Elgin that you'll do your best to see that this won't happen? Oh, well, I. I've been at and I've been talking since the beginning of the campaign that I, 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 our property tax rate is already very high, and we can't afford to increase it um, right now. We need to ensure that it, it's that we're we remain an affordable place to live for current residents, and we're attracting new residents. And I think that if we increase that, it would it would work at cross purposes that we would. We I would, agree. We would have a hard time um, meeting those um, obligations. Um, we, we may need to look at fees for services to ensure that we're covering our costs, like um, like uh, when we're looking at fire um, or, uh, paramedic services, those kinds of things where there's a, a fee involved with the service, um, inspection fees, those kinds of things. We may need to look at that just to make sure that we're covering our costs. But we need to make sure that we're, our spending is, um, is in line and that we're as efficient as we can be and that we're deferring programs that may be wonderful and necessary or wonderful and great improvements um, when times are good but may not be essential um, when you know when times are hard like they are right now um, there were um, projects in the in the last budget that i thought could have probably been deferred until we had better revenues um, some computer uh, uh, wi-fi expansion to uh, to uh, city-owned department facilities, um, you know, th those kinds of things can be deferred until we have the resources to really fully fund them. We need to make sure that we're in investing in public works, police, fire, and infrastructure. The necessities, the bare bones. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> what kind of assistance is there in Elgin for families facing home foreclosure? Do we have anything for them? Um, well, there are state and federal programs, I know, and there are local agencies uh, that will work with homeowners um, and and help advocate for on their behalf with the banks. Um, those and those agencies tend to be funded through the federal government. It's more of a federal program, um, but certainly there are agencies. I believe uh, uh, neighborhood housing services may be one of those agencies that mm -hmm. helps homeowners who are facing foreclosure to navigate the whole system and uh, again work with the banks and the mortgage lenders. I have a friend who was working with them in Chicago. She's facing foreclosure. She is in arbitration, and she just got a telephone call Monday that tomorrow she has a big hearing and that the branch of the neighborhood housing services that she was working with, funding was cut, so they are closing their office, and they can no longer handle her case. And so now she has until tomorrow. Wow. She had to drop everything in her, you know, that she's trying to build her business back up. She had to drop everything, redo all her paperwork, redo all her forms, and what they're twisting her guts out. Yeah. It's like, Ooh, it's yeah. sad what they're doing to her. Yeah. Um, Elgin City fun. Government is an at-large system. Um, are you in favor of the mixed ward system? No, I'm, I...